Hey, y'all. Hey. Do you guys remember the look on Marcy's face when we asked her to make a scarf mask? You know, I want a scarf mask for winter. Fix your face. Scarf mask. With a sew-in filter pocket? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Guess what? She figured it out. Let's go. That's my line. Yes, folks, it's true. I've got a quick, easy, one seam t-shirt, gator, scarf, mask for you. I'm gonna have to come up with a more elegant name for that. Here's what you're gonna need. A large t-shirt, ballpoint pins, ballpoint machine needles, chalk, a tape measure, scissors, a gridded ruler, a safety pin, and you know, the usual suspect of a sewing machine. Apparently, you can find one at the library. Now let's talk sewing and notions for a hot minute, cause sewing talk is hot. If you use a regular old straight stitch on stretch fabric, when that fabric stretches, the stitch is going to pop. Luckily, most home sewing machines come with a zigzag stitch, which is what you can use in order to create the seams on this mask. You might have something fancier, like an overlocker, and I advise you to go on ahead and employ that fancy schmancy that you got. But if your home sewing machine has a straight stitch and a zigzag, you're good to go. You're also gonna wanna use Jersey ballpoint needles in your machine and ballpoint pins for your pinning. These tips are slightly rounded for your pleasure. I told you sewing talk is hot. Whoa. Okay guys, now listen up, because this part's real important. I've made a few of these masks to see how they fit, and here's the deal. If you use a t-shirt fabric like this one, which is 100% cotton, it doesn't have enough stretch to stay on your face. You need to use a t-shirt fabric like this one, which is a cotton poly blend. This fabric has snapback. You hear that? Snap back. That's what keeps it on your face without the need for a drawstring or extra elastic. If you look on the inside of this mask, there's a fold over band that goes all the way around the width of your face. That's what keeps the mask up. This fabric, which was the winner for me, is 60% cotton, 40% poly. We're gonna start with our giant t-shirt. And here, bigger is better. Somebody had to say it. Okay, we've got our bigger t-shirt laid out nice and flat. And my t-shirt has this great graphic on the front, so I'm gonna use the front of my t-shirt. But you can use the back if you've got more real estate back there. What we're gonna do is make a rectangle out of this t-shirt, and I don't want that sleeve seam in there. So I'm gonna start my rectangle as close to the sleeve seam as possible, using the side of the t-shirt as my straight edge. Now we've gotta do the same for the neckline, give ourselves a nice chalked cut line so we don't have any of that neckline curve in our rectangle. And we're gonna cut our rectangle just out of the front of the t-shirt. No need to cut through both layers, just that rectangle that you chalked out. And there you go. Hold on to those remnants. We're gonna use those in a minute. How perfect is the graphic on this t-shirt, huh? Huh? Now, the bottom hemmed edge of my t-shirt is going to be the bottom of my mask, and the top cut edge is going to be the top of my mask. The long sides of our rectangle are going to be our center back seam, the one seam in this mask. Now, we need to make sure that our rectangle's equal, so I've marked a center point here on my rectangle, and I'm going off the graphic to figure out where that center point is. Now I'm going to fold my rectangle right at that center point that I just marked. I'm gonna match up the hem at the bottom and the raw edge at the top. 
and I'm just gonna make sure that the straight edges of my rectangle are totally straight. So you can see there's some excess up here. We gotta true up those edges. This is super easy. I'm just gonna take my ruler and I'm going to align it along the straight edge of the top here. And I'm just gonna chalk a line right down and cut off that which offends me. Now we've got our rectangle, so now we need our model. Ladies and gentlemen, my husband Rob! <laughs> Rob is going to be a very willing model for us because Rob wants a scarf mask. He does. Okay then. So you're gonna take your t-shirt rectangle you like it? I do. Do you even see what it oh. says? Oh, yeah. It's so good, Sweet. right? You're going to take your center mark and you're going to center it over the nose. How you doing? Super. You doing good? Yeah. Now you're going to take your safety pin. You're not going to pierce your model's skin. You don't want to do that because you love your model. Can you turn to the side for the people? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Such a willing model. You're going to match up those raw edges at the back. It's gonna match up the back and you're just going to pinch the fabric to where it feels snug, but not uncomfortable. How does that feel, Rob? Snug, but not uncomfortable. Oh, so that's just about right then. Just about. Sweet. So we're gonna throw a safety pin in the back there. How's that feeling now, Rob? Well, it's a little looser. It's a little looser, so we're gonna pin it a little tighter. Did I just stick you? No. Nope. Good. Uh, it's still a little loose, Marcy. You want it even tighter, and eh? A little tighter. We're gonna really just pinch it up this time. <gasps> Kidding. I hate you so much. <laughs> I hate you so much. How's that? That's pretty good. Okay, face front. You're in so much trouble after this. Now, I'm gonna need you to pull that off your head to see if you can actually get it off your head. Wait, straight down or up? Up. Up. Because it's gonna go up off your head. Worked out Boom. all right, yeah? Yeah, I just hit you in the chest with my elbow. Was it the chest rub? Well, maybe not. <laughs> I was just, it's for kids here. It's a family show. <laughs> it is a peachy channel. This um, is a very peachy channel. But off, people have parts. It came off just fine. It came off just fine. So that's May a good, I go now? No, you may not, actually. You're going to stay here with me and entertain the people while I take them through the next steps. Okay? Move over a little bit. It's right here is good. It's right here. Sweet. All right, next, we're going to mark where we pinned that. Let's go flat to take a look at that. This is fascinating for him, I know. So you're gonna chalk mark on both sides where your safety pin is before you remove that pin. Now let's take that bad boy out. That little chalk mark where we pinned is basically the start of your seam line. So we're gonna add seam allowance, a lot of allowance. You want that extra seam allowance because it's easier to make it smaller than it is to make it bigger. I'm gonna go with an inch of seam allowance because he said he wanted it snug. It might bite me in the tuchus, but there's always more t-shirts for me to make him another mask if this one ends up a little too snug. I'm gonna roll the dice. Let's just get that allowance added to both sides. And now we just cut right along those chalk lines. Now we're gonna need two measurements for the fold over. The fold over, you paying attention? is what's gonna give you the option for the sewn-in pocket filter that was requested. I thought it was supposed to be a dummy. No one ever calls you no dummy. We're gonna measure from just above Rob's beautiful schnoz to the tip of his chin. That's a four. That's a four for his length, okay? Nose to chin there is the length. And then we're gonna measure your width, Rob. Let's measure your width right across his nose from the edge of the eye to the edge of the other eye. That's a six. Rob has a width of six. Width of sixth length of four. Let me just write those down. Thank you for sharing your digits. 
We're on to the next step now. Let's go flat again. Like this is taking a turn this week. <laughs> is it just me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How much longer? Why, are you getting bored? No, Good. not at all. Good, because we've got a few extra steps to do. Super. All right, let's look at this on paper. Rob has a width of six, that's eye to eye, over the nose. A length of four, that's above the nose to the chin. And then you're gonna double the length. That's your distance to your fold, and that is eight. And now we're gonna put those measurements down on our rectangle. I'm gonna start from the center point that I've already marked there. And I am going to drop down to the distance to the fold, which is an eight. So I take the top of my ruler, eight inches down, draw myself a nice line. I can use the graphic here to just extend that line all the way across, but you can just measure equally across from the top of your rectangle, double your length. Mark that line, and that is now your fold line. We are now gonna go from the fold line and mark the center of that fold line. Next up, we're going to take our width and we are going to spread it out equally from the center. Rob's width is a six, so I'm extending three inches from the center on one side and three inches on the other. That's a width of six. Then you're gonna take your length and drop that down on either side. So I'm dropping down four inches on either side. I'm just gonna give myself a mark on the bottom of those lines so that I know when to stop stitching. Okay, let's look at it again. You've got double your length. That gives you your fold line right there. Then from the center of that fold line, you've got your width and then your length. And here's what it looks like, all marked up and, and ready for our next steps. It's pretty sweet, right? Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Next, we need the t-shirt remnant so we can make a little nose casing. Now, where did I put the t-shirt remnants? Okay, we got our t-shirt. We'll get them back. We'll get them back. Here's our t-shirt remnant. I am just going to snip about four inches of hem and use that for the nose bridge. Here, I'll show you real quick. That is a serge stitch or a, a cover stitch for those of y'all who are learning new sewing terms along with learning how to make masks and uh, getting bit by the sewing bug. Now I'm going to cut right above that because I want to keep that stitched down seam allowance. That's gonna make less work for us. Yep, that's about four inches. Once you start sewing for a while, you kind of start getting a little ruler in your head. You're able to do these things just with your eyeballs. And now we have a nice little nose bridge casing. The center of that hem is a little tube. It's just a ready-made tube waiting for you at the bottom of your t-shirt remnant. We're gonna fold that in half, and we're going to throw a little pin in to mark the center nose bridge casing. Now, we've got our fold line. So I'm gonna fold this wrong sides together right on that fold line. Now I'm gonna flip it over so that the shorter side of the fold is on top, and the longer side of the fold is on the bottom. Now I'm gonna take my nose bridge casing and I'm going to position it so that the center point that I marked with this pin matches the center point of that fold line and pin it on through. So now we've got our nose bridge casing centered on the center of the fold line of the mask. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna zigzag right along the top through all three layers of this fold. Let's go to the machine. I have got my machine set to a zigzag stitch and that's what it looks like, a zig 
zag, I'm going to take my fabric that we just pinned up so nicely and I'm going to lay it so that fold where we pinned the nose bridge casing is down and the nose bridge is up. We're going to drop that foot and just position it so that needle sinks in right at the edge. Take a few stitches, and take a few back stitches, and just sew along through all the layers. Now you've got a nice line of zigzag stitching that keeps your nose bridge casing in. You can go ahead and add another line of stitching along the bottom of the casing if you want, but I don't want to break up this statement that Rob is about to make on the front of his face. All right, here's what it looks like folded on the table. We're gonna unfold that rectangle again. And you see this fold line here? We're gonna refold that, okay? And we're going to pull the fold line up to meet the raw top edge of the mask all the way across. Uh-huh, you wanna see that again? Unfold your mask. You see your fold line up here? You've got your nose bridge right there. You're gonna fold your mask again along the fold line and pull that fold line up to meet the raw edge, creating basically a long tuck in your rectangle. Make sure all those edges line up nice and neat and pin all three layers together all the way along the top of your mask rectangle. This means you're going to have three layers of fabric in front of your face holes and when we stitch those two lines down right here, you're going to have a filter pocket for right in front of your face holes. I'm going to throw a pin in on either line just to keep the fabric from shifting around under your needle. And now we just got to zigzag down both of those vertical lines. and repeat for the other side. Now you can see you've got lines of stitching down either side of that box and when you flip it over to the back, you'll see you've sort of created a pocket, a pocket. You see how my hand can go in there and you don't see it from the back? and you don't see it from the front, there's a nice little pocket. Now what I'm gonna do to finish this off, because I'm extra, is zigzag right along this edge, skip the pocket, and then zigzag along this edge. So I'm catching all the layers of the fold. Then we've just got the center back seam, and then we're done. So let's stitch. And there you have the upper edge. Let's get Rob in here and try it on for the center back seam. Oh, there you are. All right, we're gonna pin this on Rob again and be sure that inch of seam allowance is still where we wanna sew this jammy up. Can you give us a little spin? Thank you. How does that feel? Oh, a little tight. That's a little tight. How does that feel? Oh, that could work. So we went from an inch of seam allowance to about a quarter inch of seam allowance. So you really do want to give yourself insurance when you're making this because at this point, can you flip around to the back again, please, for me? Thank you. At this point, we're sewing together six layers of jersey, and that is going to make for a tighter seam allowance than just pinching two layers of jersey together. Thank you, Rob. You're welcome, Marcy. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> I do! Oh, my. <laughs> Home stretch, y'all. Okay, we're going to take our rectangle and fold it over so the long edges meet. We're gonna make sure all of those edges match up. 
just perfectly. Now we're gonna sew from top to bottom. So I want my pin heads at an angle and I want the heads pointing towards the bottom of the mask. Now when I remove my pins as I'm zigzagging, they're gonna come out nice and easy for me. I like to make things easier on myself when I can. I am now stitching this up at a zigzag quarter inch seam allowance. It's totally gonna hold, it's gonna be fine, but it's always good to leave yourself a little more insurance. There's your fold over filter pocket with those two lines of stitching just down the front. And that fold there creates the pocket itself. On the inside, you've got the nose bridge that you can insert something bendy into. And there's your center back seam. And the rest of the length is to keep your neck nice and cozy and warm as the colder months approach. I used a specific waxy chalk that disappears with the heat of your iron, and I will link that below for you. Let's hit it with some steam. Et voila, chalk lines are gone. Let me get my model in here for you. Oh, Rob! extra seam allowance because it's easier to make it smaller than it is to make it bigger. I feel the exact opposite. <laughs> Can we use that? I don't know. That's pretty funny. Okay. Okay.